Welcome to the first video of the activity and temperature chapter. In this video we're going to cover a very important concept. I'll go over the actual dot point and I'll explain what the concept is. Um, identify the role of enzymes in metabolism, describe the chemical composition and use a simple model to describe their specificity on substrates. There's a couple of parts to this video. First we have to be able to identify the role, so we need to know what the role of the enzymes are. We need to know what metabolism is, that word metabolism as well. We need to describe their chemical compositions. We need to know what enzymes are made up of, like what is an enzyme. And we need to use a simple model to describe their specificity on substrates. So all of this I'll go over in this video. First I'll use that word, the word that I said we need to know, metabolism. So I'll quickly cover that word. So here I wrote metabolism. What metabolism is, is basically the sum of all chemical reactions, the sum of all reactions. What I mean by that is I've got a couple of pictures here, the ones in the corners. Here in this case we have sucrose, or another way you can see that is food. Sucrose is like table sugar, but it also comes from other things. So food breaks down to glucose and fructose. This here is a chemical reaction. So this arrow means that this chemical reaction has occurred. So a chemical reaction. Here we have glucose turning into ATP. ATP is energy. So Glucose turning to ATP is also a chemical reaction. We've got amino acids building proteins. That is a chemical reaction. Because of this arrow, that's the chemical reaction. And then we also have another one, which is quite a random one. Uh, catechol goes into benzoquinin. And this is this here. And this also is a chemical reaction. So all of these are just chemical reactions. Now there are thousands of millions of chemical reactions in a body. And all of them together is what we call our metabolism. That's that word metabolism, it's just all chemical reactions that occur in our body. Now another way you can look at that is, you might have heard the word fast metabolism before. So I write fast in front of metabolism. And when we talk about someone who has a fast metabolism, that's usually when we refer to someone who has that kind of body shape. Someone who can eat a lot, but not gain a lot of weight, because they just keep burning off all that whatever they're eating. And the reason why is because actually they're doing more chemical reactions. So they have a faster metabolism, their chemical reactions occur more than a normal person, which is why they can eat more and burn more. Right? So metabolism itself is just another way of looking at all the chemical reactions that have happened in our body. And these were a couple of examples I gave just now, but there are much more. But when we actually talk about this dot point, we have to identify the role of enzymes in metabolism. So what is the role of enzymes when it comes to these chemical reactions? And I'll give you a quick hint, and I'll go over that more in a second. But here we have this, this sucrose right here, turning into glucose and fructose right here. So this is the chemical reaction. And right here there are enzymes. So enzyme actually makes, makes this happen. Enzyme makes it possible. We have our cardioli here and our benzoquinin right there. And again, this is the enzyme right here. So without the enzyme, this would not be as fast as it is here. So they speed up reactions. I'll cover that now. So Identify the role of enzymes, metabolism. Metabolism is just all chemical reactions in the body. And the role of enzymes is to speed up those chemical reactions. So first I'll cover you know, what these enzymes are. So here we've got a couple of different important words you need to know. S, so this right here, that's our substrate. So if we, ha if we have a chemical reaction, I'll write one right here. Substrate. I shall write over there substrate breaking down into products. So this is our chemical reaction. And what this enzyme does, this enzyme we usually write on the arrow itself or next to it because this enzyme speeds up this chemical reaction. It speeds up the process of breaking the substrate into a product. Right, so we have a substrate here. We have the enzyme which is this blue shaped part right there. This is kind of like the factory worker. It's going to help us break it down. And then what happens, so what's going to happen is this substrate will actually land on this enzyme here. And that's what I've done here. This is the enzyme substrate complex, which just means that the enzyme has joined together with the substrate. And once that happens, it gets broken down into two different parts, or in this case, into two different parts, but some enzymes do different things. But here we have 
two products being formed, and then they go their separate ways. And so that's the function of the enzymes. These enzymes speed up chemical reaction. So I'm going to write they speed up chemical reactions right here. That is a main role in metabolism. And this is a really good word to remember as well. They are biological catalysts, which just means the same thing. Catalyst is anything that speeds up chemical reactions, and biological means that they're actually ma biologically made. So they're made by living things. In our case, our, our body itself makes these. And this is just a quick way of, of looking at the same concept. So here we have a substrate. Now, if there's no enzyme present at all, they might actually break down into products, but it's going to take a long time. So this will, might take days or, or years if it were to break down into products. Whereas if we have an enzyme present, so now we have an enzyme, and the substrate comes in, and as soon as it comes in, the enzyme breaks it down, and you have a product formed. So with the enzyme, it just makes it so much faster. Now when it comes to, for example, making ATP, energy, we want to make sure it's actually quite fast because we want to make sure we can make energy constantly. If it's too slow, that might mean our body might not get enough energy and we die. Right? So the role of enzymes is to speed up chemical reactions. Without enzymes, our chemical reactions would not occur at a fast enough rate. Now the second part was describe their chemical composition, so what are they made of, what kind of stuff. And what they're actually made of is amino acids. So these balls here are meant to be amino acids. I'll show you a quick animation again in a second. When all you see is you see all these different balls, they're all amino acids. They'll come together and they'll form a long chain. Eventually, it's going to be called not amino acid, it's a polypeptide chain. So all these together are a polypeptide chain. Polypeptide, and you should remember all of these words polypeptide chains. And eventually, they become a protein. So from your single amino acids into a polypeptide chain, from that into a protein. And an enzyme is a protein. So proteins are different things. They can be, you know, your muscles are proteins as well. But enzymes are protein as well. So I'll show that quick animation. So here you can see all these amino acids coming together, forming a long chain. And once they form this long chain, it can turn into different things. It's a protein now, but we also, our enzymes are proteins, so it's going to turn into an enzyme. So now we have our enzyme here. So that's the chemical composition. So enzymes are made up of amino acids, which form polypeptide chains, which then form proteins. So enzymes are all proteins. Also, we need to be able to do the next, as well as, oh, sorry, before I go into the next part. This here is our enzyme, the one we've drawn a couple of times now. So this yellow thing here. And this is not how it looks like in our body. When it comes to our body, this is how it looks like. This is what an enzyme looks like. You can see all these small dots, these tiny dots, all over the place. These are the amino acids. So each of these balls that I drew earlier is one of those little dots. So you actually might have, I mean, you don't have like five or ten. You can have you know, tens of thousands or even more of these dots making one enzyme. So I hope that was useful. Uh, now when it comes to the next part, we need to use a simple model to describe the specificity. So there's two models which we often use to describe how enzymes work. So these models are just there to help us be able to visualize what happens. One is called the lock and key model. One is called the lock and key model. And the other one is called the induced fit model. And when it comes to, so I'll put numbers, one and number two. So when it comes to lock and key model, what you can imagine is a substrate is like the key and it fits into the enzyme perfectly, right? So for the lock and key, it's the perfect fit. Whereas for induced fit, so after this is actually gone together, obviously you're going to have this breaking down and you're going to have two products forming and everything's good, right? That's the lock and key. And if induced fit, oops, what you're actually going to have is you're going to have this the substrate come in, but you can see that fit isn't perfect, not like it is with lock and key. It's almost perfect, but not quite. So what the enzyme actually does, it will change the shape to fit perfectly, so get that missing part and fit perfectly. And then what it'll do is it'll actually snap it in part into two. So now I'll just imagine it's the same part, it's snapped into two, and those two products will leave. 
And I'll show you an animation as well in a second just to show you that in a more visual way. But then we have two products formed and everything's good again. And then once it leaves, it's going to go back into its original shape. So it's going to change again to its original shape. And this looks a bit messy, but I'll show you the animation that makes it more easy to visualize. And so the animation, we've got our log and key model here. You can see the enzyme is here. The substrate comes down. It fits perfectly into the enzyme, breaks it down into products, and it leaves. Right? That was your lock and key. And it does fit. Again, it, the, the substrate comes down. It doesn't fit perfectly. But then it changes the shape to be able to fit perfectly. It slices into two. You have your products leaving. And then your enzymes pop back into its original, original shape. That was induced fit. So it's inducing its fit for it to be able to work, but then it changes shape again. So these two models are both used to describe how enzymes work, but induced fit, this one is the more realistic. So this is a bit more, so induced fit is that's probably how our enzymes actually work in our body. Whereas with lock and key, it's easier to kind of understand because you've got your lock and your key, whereas induced fit is a bit more um, foreign, that concept, I guess. And also very important is that for every reaction, for every reaction, for every reaction, there is only one type of enzyme. There's one specific enzyme. That's what the specific enzyme. That's what the actual dot point is saying. Use a simple model to describe their specificity on substrates. So, for example, if we have, if this enzyme were sucrase, which is an enzyme that breaks down sucrose and the substrate were sucrose, the sugar sucrose. And so you have, here you have our sucrose, and that breaks down to two products called glucose and fructose, two smaller sugars. This enzyme, if it were sucrase, the enzyme sucrase, will only break down sucrose. It's specific for sucrose. Because that kind of reaction, will, so the enzyme will only speed up that kind of reaction. If you put, for example, something else, if you put um, maltose, so I'll say maltose into that, maltose instead of sucrose, sucrase, the enzyme sucrase will not work on maltose. You need to have a different enzyme for that to happen. Right? So let's describe the model to describe specificity of the enzyme. So we've got lock and key and induced fit. And enzymes are specific, which means that they only work on one type of reaction. Every reaction in our body has a different type of enzyme. So I'll quickly go over all this again. Identify the role of enzymes in metabolism. That was to speed up chemical reactions. The role of enzymes is they are um, biological catalysts. Describe the chemical composition. They are made of proteins, and proteins are made up of amino acids, which form long polypeptide chains. And use a simple model to describe their specificity on substrates. We have the induced fit and lock and key model, and they're specific, so they only work on every enzyme, type of enzyme only works on one type of substrate. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.